Welcome to the Prog Talks by the Prog Space. Welcome to the Prog Talks, an interview series by the Prog Space, where we will be talking to musicians in all corners of the progressive music scene. Welcome back to another episode of the Prog Talks. I'm your host, Dario. And uh, before we jump into today's topic and welcome today's guest, as always, uh, please don't forget to give the Forget to get us a cup of coffee or tea. It helps us a lot. And now um, I'm happy to welcome uh, Charles uh, from Paris, uh, from the band Craft. Hey, are guys. You? How are, are you? you <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks for inviting me. Um, yeah, uh, thanks for taking the time. You have a, a new project, a new band called Craft, and uh, yeah, we were happy to to um, premiere also the title track of your upcoming debut album, Epic Discordant Vision, coming on June third. So two days after this episode will drop, I think. And now yes. we want to we want to know everything about Craft. Uh, I think it's fair. It's 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 fair to say that it's, it's quite unique and quite innovative, which is rare uh, nowadays after so many years of um, innovative music. It's, it's hard to find something that is still innovative, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I never tried to be innovative, so to speak, with this project, but I'm a huge fan of metal since I, I basically grew up with records like Gojira, The Link, or Meshuga, Chaosphere, or that like those records, those very heavy records that really marked my teenagehood. And later, I I saw a jazz big band play live. I thought, what what on earth is this kind of freedom that they have? You know, they play the melody, and then the the horns are just so free to play whatever they like on on the chord changes and then later i discovered that it's more complicated than that so but i never meant to be cre like original or create something new i just always wanted to blend those two things that i love which is jazz and metal mm. uh, yeah that in itself is not uh not that new i mean there, there's been a couple yeah. of bands doing that uh, for a while um, including um, Panzerballet from Munich. Uh, I've seen them a lot yeah. of times in the last 15 years, probably. Um, but you have a, another component in the music that is that is that is even more unusual um, in a metal or also in a jazz context. And that is the Gregorian touch, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. It's the medieval chant touch. Um, there's no one singing in our band. We're an instrumental band. But again, for so many years, I wanted to blend these two styles. It's been in my head for a while. I always had this frustration of not being able to uh, to, to have th these two styles blend in a way that I would find happy to play on stage. And I tried so many times to kind of write compositions and I was never satisfied. And one day I, I was in the Paris Conservatoire and I saw that they we have to take elective kind of courses. So the main course I was taking was jazz, jazz studies. And I saw that there was this uh, Gregorian choir. <laughs> and I thought, oh, I, I, I don't know why, but I felt really attracted by this, by these melodies. And I spent a year or so learning by heart those latin singing ancient monk melodies and i find i found them so epic and so transcendental like these melodies just crossed all these centuries to end up in a lot of different music that we actually listen not only classical composers but also video games music film music a lot of them use those Gregorian chants, like Middle Ages melody to symbolize things. A lot of times it's death. Like there's this <laughs> melody, Dies Irae, that is the um, uh, masses for the death, death 
that is used to symbolize deaths. Sometimes in the movie, you will hear this little melody when someone important dies. Or... So I felt this melodic material is so powerful that I just started writing, like putting these melodies into my metal riffs and my jazz harmonies. And it all magically works together. And it really, it's the third thing. It's the third brick that I was looking for to complete the, the building, the third building material that I was looking for to build this music. And it makes an original mix because I guess no one before probably mixed those three things. But yeah, that's what I was looking for. <laughs> I'm so happy uh, about the band and the, the album. I'm so happy about everything now. Wonderful. Yeah, you said uh, that you're an instrumental band. So uh, could you introduce us to the um, musicians in the band? What kind of lineup is it? Um, which instruments are uh, to be found in the music of Kraft? So Kraft is, um, to begin with, you have this very traditional power trio. So um, drums, uh, bass and guitar. But they have obviously have more strings um like six strings bass and seven strings guitar so that we can go very low you know <laughs> <That's what> we, <laughs> we want to crush things low and on top of these three um metal blokes we have those um a saxophone a tenor saxophone that is purely acoustic it's um to create this yelling sound because we don't have a singer and i wanted this um this cry of of freedom of energy that the 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 singers the growlers the screamers usually bring in jazz it's this saxophonist is bringing it and i bring all the harmony and the weird sounds with my accordion and this accordion hold on <laughs> has electronic sensors so that i can use the acoustic instrument as a master keyboard for putting all kinds of th synthesizers on the music so for a summary, guitar, bass, drums, tenor saxophone, and this weird ass accordion. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So yeah, you um is accordion like your your main instrument also in, in your other musical outputs? Yes, it's my main instrument. I did a bit of drums, but I mostly use it to relax. <laughs> uh, my, That's an yeah. interesting uh, approach to playing drums. <laughs> yeah. You know, some people have this um, thing that they press so that they ah, relax. Yeah. <laughs> I have the drums. I just hit my drums and I'm happy. <laughs> the stress ball. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The drums is my stress ball. And I use it as a composition tool as well. I just sit on the drums and see if I can play what my drummer plays, but really slowly. <laughs> yeah, but my main instrument is accordion. And over the years, I put those electronic sensors little by little on it and choose my synthesizers very carefully. So now I, I'd say I have my final setup. So ah, oh, so you, did you, did you um, build it yourself? Like the, or, or, or are there accordion uh how do you say builders <laughs> that that do this uh like that 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 put the sensors in accordions so usually it's a bit of both usually um there is indeed a electric accordion but most of the time you have to choose between if you want an acoustic instrument or an electric instrument because there's not really enough space in the instrument to have the full instrument with all the notes on the right hand, all the notes on the left hand, and the sensors, it's generally, it's, they will all tell you it's impossible to build. But <laughs> I built with several, I, I worked with several people, one guy in Italy that works with an accordion factory and uh, was willing to put the sensors on the right hand side. But he looked at the left hand side and said, no, there's not enough space and stuff. And then I, several years later, I met a crazy genius that, that said everything's possible. What do you mean? So he he opened my left hand and put sensors as well and took out some of the mechanical parts that he thought was not important. <laughs> in the, but I, I was a bit surprised. But it was actually he took out some of the yeah mechanical parts that you can use on accordion to do um, different sounds. So I, I have let's say ten percent less um, acoustic capacity on 
left hand, but I have way more now with the MIDI and the sensors and yeah. Well, way more possibilities. But of course, mm. you meant uh, he opened up the, the, the left hand manual on your accordion. You, mm. you said he opened up your left hand. So it sounded like you got like uh, augmentation oh, into your, to your hand, like your bio uh, sensor bio bio bi bionic yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Robocop. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's super, super interesting, and um, it also plays a plays a huge part in Kraft's music, of mm -hmm. course. Um, so when when you assembled the band and 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 started writing these songs, um, are they all your songs? And did you kind of just present it to the players, and they they said, okay, we're gonna play it, um, or or was it? Uh, were they also maybe a little bit involved in in the in the arrangement? during the recordings or or is it just like your 100 your vision <laughs> so the yeah vision is a good word <laughs> <laughs> epic discordant vision right it's yes. it's it's uh, the creative process is that i write down everything i even write down drum breaks i i just but in in music notes not in tabs i write now, down everything on uh bars on stacks, I think it's the English word. Yeah. So um, yeah, I just write down everything and then bring it to the guys and they see if it's possible to play. And generally there's not much thing to change, but sometimes they suggest little modifications. Like the drummers, the drummer would suggest, okay, this we can do with open hi-hat instead of ride or things like that. Oh, there's the saxophonist. It's tail. <laughs> Hello. Hi. What's up? <laughs> Hi. Prog talks. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're we're all in, uh, in the sound engineer's house now. We spent a few days together uh, rehearsing new new music, but let's not talk about new music yet. <laughs> let's yeah. talk about the the album. <laughs> yeah, yeah. First, first you have to release your your debut yeah. album. Um, Apart from the studio uh, stuff, there's of course also the, the live aspect to music. And uh, judging from pictures and 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 video snippets I've seen, uh, you you already had some some concerts uh, since the foundation of the band. Is that correct? Yes, we had a few concerts. Um, what is fun is that it was mostly in jazz con contexts in France. We played in a huge jazz festival. It's like one of the biggest jazz festivals in Eastern France. And you had like a thousand people that came to see Roberto Fonseca and Makaya McCraven, which are, um, I'd say, very consensual kind of jazz that are very like easy to listen to, but with great energy, but like very great audience kind of jazz. And we, the curator there wanted to like shock the audience and for us and before these guys. and. We were so worried that the jazz guys would say, "Oh, what is this metal? Is this a?" Is I thought it was a jazz festival, but no, everyone liked it. So it's really strange to play in these venues and like everyone is sitting down, but they're vibing the hell out of the <laughs> the concert. Wonderful. But yeah, we 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 played a few in mostly in jazz context, but we're looking forward to bring it to the more metal and prog stages. But for now, we all kind of come from. Uh, conservatoire or jazz kind of backgrounds, even if we're all like fond of metal and always been listening to it, we have this common culture that makes us able to understand this music and play it together and like build something together. Like, but yeah, for now, the contacts that we have, the opportunities are more from an um, institutional and jazz background kind of, yeah, background. Mm. <laughs> But uh, we, yeah, the, about the life, we we worked a lot with a light engineer, mm -hmm. and he, we 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 send him um, audio signal so that he can launch some kind of lights with us on the beat, and yeah, we we worked that we really worked hard on making the um, this music a show as well, um, being huge fans of Gojira and Meshuga and and so on. We we wanted this the stage to be the main uh, purpose of this band. So everything you hear in the album will be the same as performed on stage. There's no sound design or there's no extra layers. It's just yeah, 
what you hear on stage. Wow, it's the awesome. set. It's the set stage project. Great. Do Do you have any any more gigs uh, confirmed already uh, coming up with the, yes. with the release of the album? Yes, actually, we were supposed to play together evening with um, a kind of famous band in France, but um, the drummer broke his shoulder or something, so it, it got oh. cancelled. That's why we're together. We thought we're supposed to play. We want to play, so we just worked on new tunes instead of <laughs> having a gig. And we're playing next. In in three days, we're doing a showcase around the the album for like private showcase in Paris, and then twenty seventh and twenty eighth of May. So in in about two weeks, I believe we we play in this very underground venue in Paris that is always full of people. It's called La Gare Le Gore. It's it means the train station. It's an old train station that is they rebuild it into a concert venue and it plays every night weird very weird projects and sometimes more easy listening jazz and sometimes more like electro or rock-ish kind of jazz or improvised a lot of improvised stuff and we're going to play there two days and have a lot of younger people also experiencing our vibe so we're quite happy about it Wow. And then later in October, November, we are building a tour. We have a we have a touring agent. We we're quite lucky since the project is so young, and there's a touring agent working with us at the moment and building this tour in starting from October, November next year. Yeah. So yeah, a lot of good things to look forward to. <laughs> awesome! I, I really mm -hmm. hope I, I'll be able to. To to catch you live, uh, that, that that that's gonna be amazing. Yeah, I I actually uh, uh, experienced uh, Pansible a, a couple of times in jazz clubs, which which was all, always funny. Um, I remember one particular time. I mean, I saw them a couple of times here in Munich in the most famous Munich jazz club Unterfahrt. Um, mm. But but one 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 time I was able to see them in Stuttgart in the jazz club Bix there and. Um, yeah, they opened with a very, very uh, heavy riff, and um, at the at the, the moment, a riff accompanied by a scream from from uh, uh, band uh, leader um, Jan Zierfeld. And the moment uh, he started, uh, there was like this uh, waitress um, bringing some drinks to the to the table, sitting directly in front of him like in front of the stage and the waitress was with the drinks and he started like ah! and she was, ah! <laughs> it, was like, um, <laughs> it was such a sight to behold and, uh, <laughs> luckily I, I don't think that the, the the drinks were spilled but uh it it made for a for a, for a good jump scare <laughs> <laughs> that would um, be a classic scene <laughs> absolutely i i will never forget this um is there in in the current prog jazz metal scene whatever is there any bands that you would say mm, that could be an interesting match to play together with them a concert or maybe even a tour yeah we we're constantly talking about the bands we love and everyone in the band loves meshuga this is our just they're our living gods these guys <laughs> um more underground but also like you, I'm sure you know them, the Car Bomb guys. We really love them. But these guys are just out of our range. We we couldn't imagine playing tour with them, but it's the bands we, we like. And yeah, we like Panzer Ballet as well. And I think we were thinking that opening, um, like being support of Panzer Ballet would be just amazing because we we have a more like mystical kind of vibe and we bring those Gregorian chanting kind of vibe from like centuries old music and they bring something more nowadays more 21st century uh like dizzy crazy playful kind of approach of jazz metal and I think the two would create a very interesting contrast and a very heavy uh evening as well so yeah, we, yeah that's kind of a, <laughs> one of our bucket list thing is to do a few concerts with Panzer Ballet. That would be great. 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I think that that would mm -hmm. be an, an amazing match. But uh, uh, I have uh, one more idea. Is yes, be, <laughs> with um, I don't know if you know Tigran Amazian. Yeah, sure. Amazing, um, uh, amazing pianist. That would be also a really cool match. And our bassist, Mark, is actually uh, Tigran's uh, bassist for his touring in Europe. Oh wow! Yeah, <laughs> and he he took part in the recording of the of next Tigran's album as well. So if you want to listen to more of our bassist, you can check out uh, <laughs> Tigran on tour. Awesome! Mm -hmm. I, I think Tigran just uh, released an album, but it was like mm -hmm. a, with standards, right? With like yes. like like yeah. a cover, like mm -hmm. a lot of a lot in jazz is like covering the standards. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Um. But but yeah, he's. He's he's doing he's kind of the inventor of uh, piano gent, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's how we feel about him. Is he's one of our really masters, <laughs> and yeah. But the next one of the next albums with the one that Mark recorded with him is going to be more towards the jazz metal side. You'll see if you if you oh, heard um, Arata Rebirth, the Red Hile album, Arata Rebirth. Probably some of the proc guys watching this, you probably know this record, Arata Rebirth from Tigran Amazian. It's it's jazz metal enough already, but it's one layer above is the next uh, one, one of uh, the next ones, yeah. Okay. That is already recorded, yeah. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah, I, I, I always th think uh, that there's not enough jazz metal out there. There's very few bands who play that, that kind of uh, genre. Um, what... Two just two particular uh, smaller bands that come to mind. Uh, that um, one one was a project that is kind of I, th I think it's it's it was just a one off from Israel. Uh, Hago, yes, um, amazing album, but looks like it's not gonna. There's not gonna be another one. And the other one from Australia, let me check for a second. I think it was called Ar Arcing Wires. Oh, this I never heard, but the Ago yes. one, I, I, I listened to it. Yeah. Yeah. Ar I really liked the the clear the clear singing on on top of the gent ish kind of vibe, repeated uh, modules of rhythm with like this very gent-ish sound and very aggressive sound with clean singing on top of it. There's one one track, I don't know if it's Stemati or something like this. Stemati, yeah. something like this. There's clear singing and gent-ish, very crushing vibe underneath. Yeah, Gives me ideas. <laughs> uh, amazing, amazing album for sure. I really, really loved it. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, this other band, I just found it. It's called Arcing Wires. Mm -hmm. Their debut album Prime was released in 2020 um, on the Australian Art as Catharsis label. Very, very good album. Is there is there any other uh, jazz metal uh, that you would uh, could think about that? Yes, comes to mind. Yes, Tell us. I would. I would recommend listening to Kilter K I L T E R oh, yeah. with. Um, with a guy that I start knowing personally now because he's French as well, but he lives between France and New York. Uh, um, Laurent David, the yes. bassist. Yeah. Um, he's composing and he's doing this trio with these three guys. And there's uh, Kenny Grohovsky, I think, the drummer, that is also drumming for Imperial Triumphant, yes. that you probably yes. know. Absolutely. And, um, and the saxophonist Ed Rosenberg. Uh, so the, the trio is... Um, bass, saxophone, drums, and ba electric bass. So yeah. very ba bassy sound, as yeah. the <laughs> names of the instrument indicate it. And uh, the the saxophonist also has his band that is called Jersey Band. It's okay. crazy. Just check it on Bandcamp. Jersey Band. Just mm -hmm. everything uh, stick together. Jersey, yeah. like New Jersey. And then yeah. Okay, it's, cool. It's really really cool in terms of jazz metal kind of research and these are the few these three guys kind of names just go instantly in my head when you ask me for more jazz metal <laughs> but i could find others oh there's Mir Mirth mirthcon i don't know if you know them mirthcon. No. i'm not sure no. but pronunciation m-i-r-t-h-k-o-n okay um, 
check it on Bandcamp as well. Very, Absolutely. very pre- precious, very precious music. Wonderful. I, I, I actually saw Kilter uh, opening for Panzer Ballet uh, last time I saw Panzer Ballet l- last year. Um, I think it was last fall when when concerts were 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 possible again um, mm-hmm. for a short period of time and then not again. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but yeah, that was amazing. And and uh, Laurent David actually uh, wasn't able to bring uh, Kenny and Ed uh, over from the United States, so so he had the two session musicians just like. Playing that crazy stuff uh, from, okay. from basically from from sheet music. <laughs> wow, that's crazy! Yeah, he knows a lot of virtuoso musicians in his surroundings. Yeah, Laurent. Yeah, yeah, and 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 some guest, some ex- absolutely crazy guest vocals by uh, Andromeda Anarchia. Um, I think she's she's originally from Switzerland or or something like that, uh, but she's also in in the new york scene uh she's mm-hmm. like a like a very avant-garde black metal project um and uh, uh folterkammer yeah yeah it's like the torture chamber <laughs> but that the, the her vocals are really really crazy she can she can do crazy stuff with her voice mm-hmm. um that that was very very uh impressive that 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 gig um i I didn't know what to expect from them, but yeah, that was um, mind blowing. Yeah, you should check out the real trio as well with Ed and Kenny. Yeah, yeah. And I would suggest also it's not really jazz metal; it's more than that. It's like jazz, drum and bass, everything metal. <laughs> it's <laughs> called. It's a French project as well. It's called Igor. Yeah. I G O R R R. Yeah, they they played actually. Yeah. In, they played in Munich, like last monday i think mm-hmm. and and like the tour for the new album was like postponed three times or something mm-hmm. and it was uh i think it was already put in a bigger venue than initially and it was completely sold out i was mm-hmm. uh, unfortunately i i didn't manage to go there um but um or or maybe it's it's still go- i i have to check um maybe i'm wrong but but i know I I I just, I don't know when when it if it's if if it already happened or if it's gonna be happening uh, very soon, but I I know for sure that it's completely sold sold out and and yeah Igor is amazing is and and uh, his his blend of electronic with uh, with um, metal and also some um, very baroque um, stuff mm. is 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 definitely very very unique. <laughs> it is yeah yeah it, they're on tour right now actually yeah we um, we tried yeah. to catch them we were we were doing a showcase two days ago in um in the nearby city that they were playing and then the showcase was delayed and we we, we were trying to like take the highway and speed up and try to catch them with but we arrived way too late they were done playing already oh. <laughs> but it's one of our it's one of the bands that we actually I forgot to mention earlier. If we want to do a support tour with a band, that would be one of our first choice. It would be like it would be so relevant for us to yeah. to play to share the stage with them. And yeah, it would be such a crazy evening. <laughs> so circling circling back to the to the tour that's in the making for, for the October, November. Uh, is it gonna be like a small club tour for with with you more or less as a headliner, or um, are you looking to playing with other bands? Can you tell so, us a little bit about the stages, the planning, the the, the of the planning? <laughs> sure. Um, for now, there are a lot of options, so I cannot I can't reveal options because it's bad luck. Of course. <laughs> of course. But I can say there are two of them that are just been confirmed. Uh, one of them is. Uh, end of October, I don't know if it's 28th of some, or something like that. Uh, between 28th and 30th of October, it's um, in, um, let's say, 300 people kind of venue. So it's not really a club, but it's a small stage. But we need those big lights and those big sounds to actually do the real show. Mm-hmm. So uh, we will share the stage with another band that is mixing metal and african traditional music or from where they're they're from they're called 
Arkan something. R A A R K A N something. Um, I think if you type uh, Arkan A R A R K A N, sorry, very hard to spell, and then <laughs> metal in in YouTube, you will probably find them. And yeah, they place this African metal really. It's really really intriguing. I'm looking forward to meet these guys and share the stage with them, with uh, Kraft and then this project. Actually, it will be probably the opposite. But we... And then there's another one in November, another concert, that we will share the stage with a solo guy that is called Hassan K, H-A-S-S-A-N, and then K. Okay. And this guy is a solo artist. He's a crazy guy, a bit like me. He he augmented his accord, uh, his instrument. I augmented mm-hmm. my accordion with sensors. He augmented his electric guitar with sensors. He even put, um, you know, the Wii remote, the Wii remote control from mm-hmm. the uh, video game. He put one in his guitar to kind of feel the the movements of the instrument and he's launching rhythm boxes and samples thanks to these things and sometimes he takes it in his hand and launches things and stuff and put it back in his guitar and start playing again <laughs> he's a solo artist really crazy guy you you should check him out he has a huge energy on stage and he will do our support for this date as well this will be in paris in the venue called la boule noire which means the black bowl and it will be the 14th of November. So if there's any Paris people <laughs> watching the show, be there at La Boule Noire, 14th of November. Hassan K and Khat. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, actually, I think I know Arkan. I, I saw Arkan supporting Orphan Land some eight or ten years ago. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, uh very, very, very cool, very interesting. Um, and uh yeah. If you guys out there want to uh, keep up to date with all the new dates that are going to be uh, announced soon, uh, yeah, uh, follow and uh, like and subscribe um, Craft on all their socials. Uh, we're going to link them here and there and everywhere. And of course, also in the description as always. Um, thank you, Charles, for taking the time. Uh, all the best. Good luck with releasing your debut album epic discordant vision i'm very very uh looking forward for people to hear it and uh, to see their reaction <laughs> yes thanks a lot dario for having me on this prog talks really honored and happy to have shared music with you and talk about music and we will definitely keep you guys posted thanks a lot again for sharing our work when we release new things it's a uh, it's a big support that we need and really happy to be part of this community right now. Wonderful. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm happy that, that you, you are, uh, you, you, you came into the uh, uh, community with such cool music. Um, <laughs> that's it for today. Thank, <laughs> thank you for listening. And uh, until next time, take care of yourselves and uh, don't forget to <laughs> like and subscribe our socials as well. And until next time, keep spreading that prog love as well. The Prog Talks, produced by the Prog Space. Main host, Rune Belsvik Reynos. Produced by Rune Belsvik Reynos, Vanessa and Matthias Kirsch. All graphics and animations by Vanessa Kirsch. Intro theme by Giuseppe Negri. Outro theme by Zach Munoviz. This was the Prog Talks by the Prog Space. See you in a week.